Down to you might not know me and uh, I was here during COVID with you guys and uh, of course I asked for this lecture la. so I get from Dr. Noraini actually it says Songnat Dari Bila so this is <laughs> actually I just want to tell you guys what I'm going to do here so everybody is wondering why Dr. Ngo wants to come to Hospital Kluang which is actually a 200 bed hospital and uh, you are actually an upper GI surgeon so I would like to tell, call myself a metabolic bariatric and upper GI surgeon right just so you're calling thing or online they got the upper GI and bariatric uh, so now you know what I mean uh. so this lecture is not going to be very scientific and it's not going to be like tell you a lot of things but uh, just want to tell you the overview of what I'm going to do for you guys right then uh, disclaimer this is my disclaimer lah. I have no disclaimer all right okay <laughs> and you see half of a million actually half a million tabanya I think this is uh, the snippets from the from the newspaper six times right dia kata half a million half million lima ratus k je right lima ratus k I can't even buy my lab tower my lab tower is one million this is a uh, half a million only but I think this underestimated uh, uh, number right but do you do you see what is a diabetes hypertension and hypercholesterolemia uh, benda ni kita kata tiga tinggi kan right Later I'll tell you why is it. But this is actually very concerning. It's very very concerning. And I found that uh, the only not the only way, the best way, the optimal way to solve this problem for Malaysia is actually MBS. Lah. MBS is metabolic and bariatric surgery. Eh? So we call it MBS. And for MBS, we very easy. We just treat two two conditions only. Right? I'm a surgeon, I'm simple-minded, right? Kanifa, surgeon do tak guna otak sangat. So the thing is, um, we just want to treat morbid obesity and also metabolic syndrome, right? So uh, feel free to stop me if you don't understand anything, uh, right? And of course BMI. Even though I hate this BMI, right? But you have to use this BMI because this BMI is a guideline for you to see what is the indication to refer to me, right? Okay, right? So um. BMI is actually weight in kilogram and then height dia dalam meter so you will get an index but I think everybody knows this but I think most of us don't know this because the buku yang kamu baca tu uh, maybe not updated, maybe outdated or whatever okay, the, the thing is if for Asian for Asian normal is actually 22.5 this is the uh, base, this is the uh, okay, I get this from the yeah, yeah, correct lah so maksudnya 23 tu is already pre-obese right mass upper atau dikata overweight right so for obesity class 1 class 2 class 3 tu you tak tengok sangat lah okay? but the thing is be realistic lah don't be underweight underweight under me also uh, underweight under me in different extreme is actually at the nutrition therapy team alright but actually this uh, actually also is under I will try to put it under lah but this one just came three months ago and this is 2023 last year's statistics but this is my duty is bmi 25 uh, bmi 23 but anyway because, why they use 25 because internationally we use overweight as bmi 25 but you look at this um 54.4 percent maybe you guys said oh tak banyak. you know us obesity how many percent siapa tahu US, America Sharika. <laughs> Places like Brazil, you know, America, they are, they are, it's actually 45%. The most is only 47 So, Malaysia boleh lah. Malaysia 54.4%. So, the, I, let me give you this. What is 54.4%? You just look someone beside you. Either you are obese or you know, the person in front of you is obese. Alright, so that is 54.4%. If you are not obese, you are 4.4% obese. Okay, so this is very concerning, right? Yeah. 
Alright, so this is a complication of morbid obesity. There's a lot from head to toe. Right? So that's why if we can reduce obesity, do you think the admission to the ward will be reduced? Yes, of course. Definitely. But the thing is, how do we track obesity? Do we track with BMI? If user is here, if user is here, she will tell she will tell you, yeah, no, 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 it is not accurate. Oh, you do not track obesity with an overall weight. No. You should track obesity with fat mass. So what do you need is a BIA machine. BIA machine is a body impedance analysis. And I think the hospital have been trying very hard to get us a BIA machine since like maybe like two, three years ago. Right? And uh, actually we have a BIA machine. Like KK Monkey Bowl. <laughs> okay. And we can assure you that uh, probably by the Hujong Taunida boleh dapatkan lah. Atau siapa-siapa nak derma, boleh dermakan lah eh. Okay, itu saja. But BIM machine, is just machine is, and one more thing ya. BIM machine is not a weighing scale. It is not a weighing scale. It's actually to look at the composition. Right, composition kat sini lah. Right, you punya water, you can look at your fat-free mass, you can look at your skeletal muscle mass, you can look at your fat mass. Right, okay. So, it will come out a paper like that. Right, because we don't have a BI machine, I have to use a BI machine kat, uh, kat Taiwan. So it's actually in Chinese lah, but I translated for you. You see, there are other things. Water mass, there are the protein mass. There are the bone mass, there are the fat mass. The most important thing we have to look at is the fat mass. Right, okay. So if you look properly, there are the, in the BI machine yang bagus lah eh. There are the muscle mass distribution. If siapa siapa yang malas nak jalan nak naik tangga, so start naik tangga hari ni ya, lift rosak kan? Okay, naik tangga je dah. Okay, then tak apa saya tiga empat je, saya angkat tiga lapan sorry lah. So anyway, siapa yang tak ada naik tangga tu, you will look at the fat mass dia kat bawah tu, it's not it's not really that high. So dia punya this was skill, but this patient you like look at him, is actually quite well well balanced. Eh, semua sama je, right? But the most important thing we want to look at this, the trend. Right, you look at the trend, it is the fat mass. Okay, this is the fat mass. It actually coming down. Kat mana tu? Fat mass. Ah ni, PBF. From 31.7%, dia jadi 30.5%. Oh, dia tak ada ni eh. Oh, cannot see ya. Ada laser lah, kita tak ada laser But what anyway, it's here lah Okay, right So, if you want, still want to continue using overall weight You look at him, this overall weight is 74% right Okay, and the fat man is like this And this, this is the muscle mass Right, but if you look at this Wah, kamu dah turun pulak badan, bagus lah, sangat bagus 72, tank, no Because you know why Look at the fat mass, the fat mass increase the fat mass increase walaupun dia punya overall weight reduce. Why? Sebab dia sudah lalai. Dia sudah lalai. Dia dia tak dia tak exercise dah. Dia tak makan protein dah. So the protein reduce. The one that is reduce reduce is actually the protein. This is not good. So the past got some nagging and scolding for me. Then dia naik balik. Dia punya uh, apa ni muscle mass. Right. But if you look at this, they actually dia kurang berat badan. They say, eh, kurang sikit sajalah, doktor. Tapi, the one that is really kurang is the percentage of the fat mass. So, roughly lah, roughly, this this fellow is about 75% or 75 kg. So, 1% is maybe around 700 gram. Lah. So, it's about 1 kg of fat mass with deduction. Okay. Right. So, this is why BIA is very important. And I need a BIA. Without BIA, I won't start. Right? But this, that, this is not the BIA machine. The one in black is not the one in white is the BIA machine. Nah. Okay, okay. So that is the BIA machine. Right? So in case you guys haven't seen, if you want to visit eh, visit Nodini. I don't know if she's here or not. Maybe she's not. Okay. So go to Mankibo, look at Nodini, you need to sure. Then after that, you begin to think of what is the BIA machine. Right? And just now saya kata tiga tinggi tu kan Tiga tinggi ni ada scientific term dia tau It's actually called a metabolic syndrome Right? So
So Metaverse in World ITF ni is a International uh, Diabetes Federation. So uh, TG do cholesterol lah. Cholesterol tinggi and TG is one of the cholesterol. So HDL cholesterol do lenda. This is a good cholesterol eh, do lenda. And the BP is high. This is hypertension lah. And the high fasting plasma glucose. This is diabetes. So tiga tinggi kat sini. But they kena ada obese lah. They kena obesity. So their trunkal obesity to uh, cut Malaysia ni is uh, male is uh, 90 cm waist conference then untuk female is 80 right perempuan kena sting sikit eh it's always like that oh, okay um, you just say yes so this is actually a very important slide i don't know you see what i see this is i get this from the uh, Malaysian guideline i think this is uh, 2023 23 punya guideline diabetes, right? Type 2 diabetes. And that is a prevalence of the diabetes. But the most important thing, eh, eh, jangan lah, diri sana, jangan petang tu banyak. Depan ada tempat duduk. Then, saya tak akan tanya question untuk orang yang depan, eh. Orang belakang yang saya tanya question. Eh, eh, Farid, eh. Okay, so, uh, this, uh, you look at this, right? If you look at this, I am very concerned on the risk plasma glucose yang kat belakang tu right and you look at that orang yang tahu dia ada diabetes dia memang diabetes orang yang tak tahu diabetes sama dengan orang yang tahu diabetes maksudnya kat Malaysia ni banyak yang diabetes tapi dia tak tahu why this happen because we don't have screening program right so how do we screen actually senang je guna mata you dia obese most likely dia type 2 lah <laughs> Kan? Ah, ini macam diskriminasi pula eh. Nanti jangan aku ni diskriminasi. So, I like this picture. This is MBS. I'm going to introduce you guys what is MBS. And this is the best MBS surgery. Kan? Yalah, dia jahit mulut lah. Tak payah makan lah. So, okay. This is the best lah. Alright, but actually, it's not. It's not lah. So, MBS in, in Malaysia ni is at not even even C. They... My my one of my MO say it's not if in uh, it's not infancy it's pregnancy right the MBS need the pregnancy level bukan infancy lagi okay so it's only in Malaysia for maybe about forty years then the thing is a uh, principle of MBS why we what surgery they akan jadi kurus so initially traditionally we think it was a restrictive mechanism kita kecukkan dia punya perut atau mal absorptive kita biar dia punya functional uh, intestine tu pendek sikit right but if you look at it it's actually hormonal hormonal is for gut and uh, high gut don't worry lah ini bukan exam eh. alright so restrictive uh, surgery this is obsolete really this procedure is obsolete this is called a LAGB laparoscopic adjustable gastric band ok the first one is dia akan restrictkan you punya stomach Right, so dia makan sikit-sikit dia ni lah, okay. Uh, but the problem is this obsolete already. This cause a lot of problem. That the more absorptive, that's the gold standard, right? RIGB, blue and white gas juga pas, gak gak more absorptive tu. How they more absorb? You tengok eh, apa yang kau makan tu? Apa yang kau makan dia memang dia sedikit sikit lah, eh. Tapi apa yang dia makan tu, dia tak dia macam macam dia kau makan lah macam mana? You kena ada enzyme-enzyme pencernaan kan? Ingat tak? Itu tingkatan lima. <laughs> Iyalah, tingkatan lima punya benda. Ah, tingkatan lima kan? Biologi. Oh, I tak ambil biologi. Okay, why? Well, but anyway, ini how far is this depending on the bariatric surgeon? Alright, we do tailor for you. Dia ada calculation dia. Whatever. So, anyway, kalau dia ini, dia tak dia dapat dicerna kan? Makanan dia tidak di absorb lah. Dia absorb kat sini. Right, so this is more absorptive, but this cause a lot of problem. Let I tell you, a lot, a lot of problem. That's why, uh, we go back to the pathophysiology, the physiology of gut. Right, so this is a very busy slide. Saya sengaja letak ni so that you all akan get scared. Right, and then uh, for gut though, is actually the hormone that is predominantly secreted dari pada stomach hingga ke ligament or tracts, and the high gut is actually the distal ileum. So for gut though, they can secrete ghrelin, PYY, 60K. These are the hormones, right? 
and hind gut is a GLP and GIP, but actually there are more than 45 hormones in the gut, right? So, sahaja lah, eh, sahaja sahaja nak na apa ni takukan orang. So anyway, nak senang, because the thing that I I believe so much have faith in this procedure is actually a foga theory which the sleeve. Sleeve do sebab gradin ni dia macam ni lah. Gradin kalau dia banyak, dia banyak gradin dia akan nak makan. It increases your hunger, right? So um, we know that it's predominantly in the stomach. Initially we thought it's only in the fundus, but no, it's actually everywhere. But the predominantly is actually the whole stomach. So stomach do berapa persen saya keluarkan? Seventy percent. So that means seventy percent of your ghrelin will be off. That means you tak akan rasa lapar, okay? Uh, hunger, satiation, satiety. Ini ada tiga to, uh, terminologi yang sangat-sangat penting. Alright. So hunger is lapar lah, kelaparan. Satiety ialah you tak rasa nak makan, you rasa puas. Okay. Macam sekarang, sudah makan sarapan dah kan? Yang tak makan sarapan tu, you are ready kau tinggi lah. Uh, so kalau you sudah makan sarapan, beri kamu rendah lah. Eh, okay. uh, dia bukan, dia bukan, dia hunger. Tapi satiety maksudnya you punya GLP angkat naik atas Then satiation, satiation je lah you makan kan sudah kenyang Then itu dia satiation, you rasa kenyang tu is satiation So you, this is order to reduce your hunger, to reduce your gravity I do a sleeve lah, a sleeve gastric, this is a sleeve gastric For high guard, high guard is actually something very interesting because uh, uh, GLP ni You tahu GLP kan, yang tu artis-artis cucuk pun dia kan, Sasenta, Ozempi, okay, yeah. Um, I try to get from this hospital, but uh, you don't, you know lah, huh? okay. <laughs> Kalau tak, I think boleh beli sendiri je lah dia, dia murah je benda tu. Nah, uh, so satu tiga, uh, satu bulan tiga je, kan, okay. So uh, tiga je, uh, tiga ribu lah, okay. So uh, <laughs> this is high gut theory. Masuknya kalau ada makanan masuk ke dalam dia punya distal ileum. Right, it will increases your GLP. Right, GLP is the hormone that cause the give you satiation. Right, so how am I going to give this both together? Is we do this both together, lah. Right, so um, that's why the types of MBS intervention are the banyak type. Alright, so the gold standard, mind you, why is it called gold standard? Kenapa? Ada benda panggil dipanggil sebagai gold standard Sebab benda tu senang dibuat Benda tu dah dibuat lama Tapi tak semestinya benda tu betul Kan? Macam... Sejika bandar kan? Dia tahu sejika bandar tu apa kan? Ah, NG tube You can cap urine catheter IV trauma, IV muscle lord IV, Sebab ada perut kena bagi IV PPI eh? Patient ada perut kena bagi PPI eh? Alright, so that's why they touch mostly the tone, okay? But the one thing is, we have also surgical intervention, we have medical intervention. Surgical intervention banyak lah, our AGP yang tadi tadi saya tunjuk tu. BPD is actually very very uh, is a video pancreatic diversion lah. So the punya common channel tu is too long. Sorry, yeah, this is you just need to know the name, alright? But MGP, LAGP, kat dunia ni sekarang tengah ada satu perang tau perang MGB atau perang sleep plus okay. so ada MGB kata MGB is good right this is actually a shorter version of uh, RYGB okay. and then sleep lah okay and sleep plus nah, sleep plus is me lah dia ada sadist macam saya lah sadist eh okay anyway <laughs> sadist diodernal switch right ada PJB proximal jejunal bypass right so ada non surgical lah ni yeah, Haji lah suka lah okay. dia punya non surgical kan So IGB is intragastric balut, right? In which uh, I tak suka kasi, and then it's quite a useless thing. And then anyway, ESG also, hmm, okay, maybe, alright. Sebab apa? Sebab dia tak keluarkan hormon dia. Okay. Then other post, eh, post primary obesity surgery endometrium. This is actually like ESG, but uh, dia punya barang lain. That's why it's called this. Okay. But uh, okay, so let me talk about RIGB. RIGB banyak orang dia mesti nak tanya kan. Wah, ni Mister Ngo nak buat apa dengan aku kan? Uh, I I takkan tukar jantina tu muri. Eh, uh, you bangkat Thailand. Eh, so uh, kita akan buat ni. This is a gold standard, and it's actually restricted and non-assertive. Remember, dia punya principle behind that is not hormonal. 
is actually more, more mechanical. So, but the thing is, the access, the advantage is the access weight loss, they will only dapat 70 to 80% in 12 months. Okay? But the problem, um, it can be done in reflux patient. Patient that reflux, you believe what? The reflux do actually treat the reflux. It can be used as a revisional. It's the like escape procedure. Lah. Kalau one of the procedure, dia salah ke, whatever problem, you can always switch to this. The disadvantage is the least of them. Right? So disadvantage, the most important is the malnutrition. After 18 months. Usually after 18 months, you have protein malnutrition, you have vitamins, you have anemia. Then the thing is uh, wet regain. That's another problem. Dia akan naik badan balik. Right? Wet regain, everybody is thinking, why can I wet regain? You know why? Dia ada regain lagi. Patient constantly lapar, walaupun dia kecil. Nampak? Dia ada remnant stomach. So that's why, why, why I do not like this procedure is like that. It didn't address the hormonal uh, parts of it. Right. And one more thing is the dear stomach ulcer. Stomach ulcer ni macam you all suka kata uji uji kan. Uji saya pun tak tahu anak siapa tu. Eh? Okay, apa je saya beli? Dah, cakap apa je saya beli? Dah, uji uji uji. Alright. So, stomach ulcer tu apa je saya beli? Dah, eh? But it's a lot, you know. Five out of five, seorang tau. So, lepas tu Zoo tak tak payah tidur dah lah. Kat Zoo tak payah tidur dah, dia team. Ya, yeah. hari-hari kena skup, hari-hari kena skup. If you do one year, you buat 10 orang, okay lah. 2 orang je, yeah, kan? Kalau saya buat 200 orang, eh? Kalau saya buat 200 orang, berapa orang? Boleh, boleh kira tak sikit? Ya, mungkin dalam 40, kan? Nak 40 orang, hari-hari kena datang untuk skop. Mungkin bukan hari-hari lah, setiap bulan. Pun cukup dah lah. Tak cukup lumayan dah. Kita, actually, we should try start to start to collect, collect duit, eh? Sporting gate pun dapat untung. Okay, external hernation and also dumping syndrome. Right, kita akan ada dumping syndrome. Dumping syndrome maksudnya, bila dia makan, dia pensan. Okay, that is one of the extreme lah. Okay, intravasi balloon. Everybody is asking me when I first first came back. Boss, aku nak balloon. Aku nak, aku nak, hey, 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 aku macam tu je lah. <laughs> you tak tahu, you tahu kenapa lah. It doesn't address the hormonal part of it. Dia kat this is all, everything is restrictive. Ya lah, dia, dia letak satu balloon, balloon besar kat dalam you, you tak boleh makan, tapi you constantly hungry You are constantly hungry Right, I, if I take out your stomach Right, a little bit Right, 70% je tak banyak Right, then You tak rasa lapar Kalau you tak rasa lapar, you makan tak? Boleh juga makan <laughs> Boleh juga makan Ada tu, tapi tu ubat, kita tak ubat untuk tu Well, anyway, dia intravenous balloon to give to give dia the owner dia dia actually dia ada weight loss lah 10 to 20 percent in four months. This is the uh, satu uh, company yang buat ni lah. Okay. Tapi the thing is after four months you weight regain. So kalau you nak kurangkan lagi, you masukkan lagi lah. Nah satu ni untuk staff uh, kerajaan eh dia murah je, ada seni berbelas je. Ah, yeah lah, yeah lah. Dia unit dia lain. Ha, unit saya guna lain. Okay. And this, the best part is, is a clinic procedure. You boleh letak kat klinik. Asalkan you ada x-ray, fluoroscopy. Alright. You ada fluoroscopy machine, you boleh buat dah. Eh, tak payah scope pun. But the thing is, mm -mm, wet begin, that's the problem. Alright. And then, uh, <coughs> usually, vomiting is very real. You, the, benda ni logic tau. You sudah letak barang kat dalam. Okay, you nak makan sangat, kena, tapi bukan dia orang tu dia nak makan salah dia tak? Ah, sekali kata eh, ada kata dia. <laughs> Actually, if you look at the hormonal level, bukan salah dia tau, salah ghrelin, salah ghrelin, right? So the thing is, you don't address ghrelin here. That's why dia akan nak makan. Dia makan banyak, muntah tak? Muntah lah. Muntah is one, it's not an issue. Aspiration is a big issue. Dia muntah di aspirate uh, Rare occasion ada Ada 2-3 case kat Malaysia ni lah Kat Malaysia ni uh, IGB ni Kalau ikut prof ni semua punya ni kan It's around 2000 per year We are putting in Not me Alright In the whole Malaysia The um, Okay ke tak um, I don't know lah But ESG lah Banyak orang ada cakap Eh no cakap lah Sikit apa tu ESG ni Apa tu benda ni ESG, ESG ni dia ESG dia actually dia buat macam sleep 
right? So the, the problem is the, the the principle is restrictive in nature. It's nothing hormonal. They didn't take out the stomach, right? Right. So they akan kuruskan, they akan ni. It will leave a bit of a fundus. So apparently, if your fundus is uh, distended, you will reduce your belly. That is the principle. And uh, one thing is, uh, it's relatively fast. Boleh buat ke sini tak? You bagi saya 20k, saya boleh buat. Okay? But the thing, the thing is, barang dia tu. Barang tu 20k lah. So, advantage is, um, ini fast lah. It's quite fast. Maybe half an hour to one hour siap. Okay? And you do not take the incision. And disadvantage, you need some special endoscopy screen tu yang marah, tu yang mahal tu lah. But one thing is, the other way we gain. So white way we gain, so you know already, dia bukan hormon. Dia tak main hormon. Right. Then, uh, and MGB lah. Okay, I just want to talk about MGB because uh, kat Malaysia ni sekarang ni, bukan kat Malaysia, kat dunia ni sekarang. Ada MGB group, ada C plus group. Yeah? So MGB group ni, dia kata, dia ini, but the principle is at the other side. The principle is restrictive and malabsorptive. It's nothing hormonal. So this semangat dia sama macam RYGB. Eh? It's restrictive saja. It just leave a little bit of uh, pouch dia besar sikit. Tapi instead of RYGB, dia buat VROF2. Eh? So, um, the, the problem is, the excess weight load, yes, is 50 to 85%. But problem, big problem in M, uh, MGB is the flux. Patient will cause a lot of reflux. Okay? Then uh, one thing is, uh, how do you rectify this? You can either you revision, uh, revision into a sleeve PJB. That's what I do, or you can do a RGB back. So, but the malnutrition is actually higher. The past, the past, lapan belas bulan, patient patient ni akan datang. Kat Malaysia ada sekarang ada enam upper GI center, right? So every year we will receive one or two cases of NGP lah like that. But the other yang mau nutrition dia tak pergi mana-mana saya pun tak tahu pergi mana. So, satu tahun banyak buat tau ni. Ni, eh? lumping sinjul pun ada. So, ah, sleeve gastric. Sleeve gastric yang you all semua tahu lah eh? Ini artis-artis sebelum ni dia buat eh. Right? So, sleeve gastric boleh buat kat sini. This is a very simple uh, simple procedure, half an hour job. Right? And uh, weight loss is 50 40 55% in one year. Learning curve is very fast. Right? So, you you maybe you need three months, eh? not three months lah. You are looking at procedures, maybe 20, 20 procedures, twenty to thirty procedures. You start boleh buat lah. Eh? If you are general surgeon lah, eh? then the refluxes, their problem sebelum ni dia ada cause a lot of reflux. But we can do a hydro hernia repair. After hydro hernia repair, ninety five percent of refluxes gone, right? So another five percent, what we can do? You boleh buat lah, uh, RIGB lah, all those things. Right, so uh, the thing is, wet regain usually two years. No, ini tengok tadi kata grenin dah keluarkan dah. Tapi ada wet regain juga ni, ni keluarkan grenin. Sebab dia tak ada increase GLP. So, we introduce sleeve plus. Sleeve plus, maksudnya ada sleeve. Dia memang ada sleeve. Dia ada plus. Plus one more procedure. Plus apa, you can do a duodenal switch. You can do a sedis. Ah, ni sedis lah eh. Ni, one, ni bukan saya, tu sedis. Okay. Then dia ada transit by partition. There are the sleeve as a day. This is called a sassy. No? The sassy is a very sexy procedure. And this is a uh, RYGB. In this matter, sadis punya RYGB. Okay, this is a loop DJ bypass. There is also a DI. Okay, it's a diodonal switch. Ah, the last one is what I will do PJB. Right, your PJB is simple, and I'm a simple guy, and uh, I don't want to complicate things. Right, so sleep PJB. I learned this from CK1, from CK1 from Taiwan, and uh, it's actually quite a durable procedure. And uh, it's actually a new procedure, it's not something very new. In fact, when uh, sleeve was first introduced, this is the other guy, Dunia Nida, this is like 1940 or 1950s, right? But somehow, benda yang bagus kan, somehow dia akan get neglected kan? Hmm, Alright, then that's why lah. So the principle is we reduce the grilling. And then what we do is we actually we inter intestinal bypass. So intestinal bypass, berapa lah panjang? Biasanya kita letak 300 meter. Satu orang punya satu manusia punya intestine 
Berapa panjang agak-agak 6 meter yes Okay saya ada buat study ya eh. It's 5 to 500 to 1000 That's what Taiwanese Right for Malaysian I tak tahu lagi lah Tapi I think Malaysian and Taiwanese are about the same Right so it, You akan reduce to 250 or 300 Centimeter total okay. Maksudnya from here From here DJ Okay to Ilo sikit ke bawah 300 Okay Right Itu saja lah Then I think the S The excess weight loss is Very promising It's about 85 to 95% The the That is Weight tu saya tak kisah sangat lah You gemuk ke You kurus ke eh. But the thing is what I kisah is You remit All your Metabolic syndrome Right You will reduce Your diabetes You reduce your hypertension You reduce your cholesterol And even your mechanical Like OSA Like your OA Ni OA Alright So you rasa saya Kalau saya boleh uh, Kurangkan metabolic syndrome Okay Admission ke hospital Memang akan kurang kan So we can invest This money to other place Right Rather than Treating the EU Right So Advantage Disadvantage The learning curve ni Quite high The problem is Counting the bowel Is sangat susah Right And then If you don't know How to count your bowel Your bowel, bowel Kamu akan koyak Alright And the problem is Not much study Have been done So That's why The Ini macam Antara Marvel Dengan DC lah Okay, uh, so DC is like MGB lah. I would like to see myself as a Marvel lah, right? So indication of MBA, nah, ini ah, uh, uh, write this down, write this down, write this down, right? Charles, eh? Charles the, the French. Okay, anyway, so dia dia kalau nak ikut guide lah, ini guide Malaysia lah. Kalau guide Malaysia dia kena fail surgical, ah, uh, non surgical therapy for six months. Okay, in fact, this has been used uh, everywhere, right? Tapi ah. Uh, Usually all these obesity patient dia dah seek treatment dah. Eh tak kisah lah dia pergi apa ni tim uh, apa ni? Ah uh, uh, TCM uh, untuk untuk pulangkan berat badan it takes kira juga eh. It kira sebagai tu. So untuk 6 bulan definition of uh, fail tu ialah less than 5% weight loss. Maksudnya dah 6 bulan tu 5% weight loss tak ada atau dia very gain. Mungkin dia sudah ada weight loss lah tapi dia very gain balik. Okay. So kalau dia tak ada comorbid, this is a morbid obesity patient Top morbid obesity is 37.5 eh nah, You tengok kawan-kawan kamu Jangan tengok saya lah Okay lah, BMI saya memang tinggi juga lah eh But anyway The type of surgery indicated Kalau tak ada comorbid, 37.5 Okay, dia sama dengan atau lebih eh? Kalau ada metabolic syndrome You just need one of it Kalau ada type 2 diabetes Kalau ada uh, hypertension kalau ada hypercholesteremia, kalau ada OSA, kalau ada NEOA, kalau ada severe back pain, right? Plus 32.5. You sudah indicated to do MM MBF. Right? Kalau saya akan jadi tak sioman sikit kan, saya akan buat 32.5 lah below, right? But this one we don't do lah. Eh, okay? ini tak payah. Kita tak buat sekarang. Sebab ini under clinical studies. But there are some studies is quite promising. If we do on this, maksudnya dia 27.5 to 32.5 Dr. Komobi, actually for all this kind of patient, we might not do a intestinal bypass We maybe we just, she just, she just needs a sleeve Right, we just need to reduce the hunger, that's it So, the clinical issues, dehydration is very real So, but dehydration is very real even in non-surgical patient pre Pre-op patient, sebab kita memang tak suka minum air okay? So let's fit intake about a smaller size mm -hmm. Malnutrition, patient malnutrition It can, it not only like that Di Diarrhea is one of the malnutrition And also um, protein PM okay. Okay. Then stomach ulcers, yes It's very notorious in gastric bypass right. So gastric bypass, RIGB, MIGB yeah. okay. And then and SASI juga Then this uh, hiatal hernia and GERD Sleeve is not absolutely indication So but we know how to treat Right, weight regain, yes. A lot of procedures actually cannot be stand. This is the one we should focus. Sebab apa lah? Kalau dia weight regain, dia punya tiga tinggi tu dah tambah lagi juga. Yeah. So that's why this is actually something very concerning. And depression, yes. That's why I need Doctor Lee. Doctor Lee is here. Thank you so much for coming. Right. That's why I need Doctor Lee. We have discussed already to screen the patient before to do an MBF. Right. Then because. 
a lot of studies have been done. Post pediatric patient, they are gonna have depression. For somehow, I don't know, right? But even though it's it's a uh, just a small part of it, but it's important. Holistic support, uh, holistic approach, right? I have been trying so hard to gather everybody. Why? Because uh, saya ni technician je, saya buat je sendiri kan. Tapi kena ada banyak orang lah. I need a case manager who is who be my nurses. I need a dietitian. Hopefully she is pretty. And then I uh, need a physiotherapist. Hopefully she is a uh, genius and fit coach too kan. Alright. Eh, mesti she eh. She pun boleh kan. Nanti cakap saya ni pula. Eh. Paramedic is very important eh. OT nurses, ward nurses. And also I forgot to put scope nurses. Eh. Registry eh. And of course don't forget your social worker. They are the one who will help you in the patient's family. Uh, together, right? They, they, they akan dapatkan background. Mereka macam PI lah, private investigator lah. Uh, you, you ada apa dia tahu kan? They are, they are very good lah. I think Puan Raima punya punya team is very good. This one for this. Okay? Then recommended follow ups start from pre operative lagi eh. We call it peri. Peri macam pre and post. So dietitian biasa dia akan cakap dengan nutrition dia, cakap dengan diet dia macam mana nak makan, okay? And physical coach, of course, is important to increase the muscle bulk. Exercise, apa exercise yang ni, uh, ada eye fitter lagi kan? Uh, dia akan masuk eye fitter kot. Okay? Dia ada structure, fitness exercise, itu eye fitter tu. Then case manager or the nurse, dia akan follow up the patient. Okay, patient, patient apa apa masalah akan call dia lah. Then psychiatrist, we will screen all the patient. If needed, we will refer to Dr. Lee lah. Then of course the surgeon, surgeon is the last lah. The surgeon pun ada darah juga kan. Ha, ni. Okay, so kita technician je, right? And then example, oh just nice. Okay, so this is ending lah. The example I just take one example. I just randomly pick one example from uh, CUH. So this is one by with his permission uh, we did a sleep PJB for him. This is July twenty twenty three and April twenty twenty four. Dia sudah dia boleh nampak kan? Okay. The result, but I am not so concerned about this. I am more concerned of the numbers. Right? You look at the fat mass. Mula mula dia dia one hundred and ten kg, right? After nine months, ini dia 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 buat si PJB kat sini lah, okay? After nine months, dia jadi enam puluh enam point lima kg. But the thing is, I always look at fat mass. Fat mass forty three percent. Last last twenty three dah normal. Untuk male normal. Uh, as uh, age less than 40, 25 percent. The 23 percent is very healthy. He he is very healthy already. But the best part is, of course, you will lose some protein mass. So, but dia pun tak orang Taiwan sebenarnya dia tak suka exercise sangat, right? So the thing is, you look at this graph. Eh? this is the fat mass. This is the muscle mass. Muscle mass actually tak tak tung tak tak turun sangat. Eh? yang turun actually is the fat mass. So this is what we want. Yeah. So, cakap ni saja lain. Wah, biar dia using glucose HC. Glucose HC ini macam ini dah sebelas dah kot dalam sepuluh sebelas. Eh, one to one. So ini sudah dalam lingkungan lima uh, enam. Eh, so HbA1c from six point three become five point seven. Yeah, that's why I cakap dengan Dr Nora ini juga. And then she is very supportive. Thank you to her. She will give us a uh, serum insulin in this hospital, right? Then, kalau ada serum insulin, you boleh tengok serum insulin tu tinggi. Kalau insulin serum insulin tu tinggi, maksudnya dia punya um, badan dia memang dia perlu uh, insulin yang tinggi lah. It's actually like if you look at it, he's already a pre uh, diabetic already actually, right? Tapi lepas dia pas sleep PJB, it reduce. So normal dia empat leh. Normal is empat. Dia dah normalize tau. Si peptide is uh, kalau dia punya pancreatic punya uh, function dia kurang, dia akan kurang. Okay. So cholesterol dia rendah. Dia ni akan rendah. ALT, ASD, dia sometimes they have a fatty liver. Okay. So this is actually fatty liver. And uh, of course, uh, Taiwanese lah. Eh, dia minum benda yang fermented lah. So that's why dia susah sikit nak kurangkan fatty liver tu. And this is ending. If you have any question, you can always ask me. I can always find me in daycare, right? And um, of course, um, I orang nutrition kan. So pensa is this year, and dia kat November kat Shangri La Hotel, right? 
So untuk paramedik saya rasa berapa eh? Uh, 800 Ada uh, 800, 900 But this is international event right? Semua orang daripada Asia Bukan international lah, Asia lah So, akan datang Nutritionist So, entity ada orang nak pergi dah uh, Then, kalau ada paper Hantarkan paper lah okay? Ini think that's it So, if there's anything Any question you want to ask me This is a QR call Semua nak keluarkan QR call eh? Dia nak tunggu ni je go Eh, tak, saya tak saya tak shoot lagi ni hari 855 je. Okay, angkat tepi tu is actually some interesting video that I have I have uh, edited, I have uh, put up. Alright, it's free and it's actually more for surgery kit, surgical punya orang lah. Eh, all the surgical videos. And this is okay, okay lah. So if any question, ada soalan tak? This is the time when you see the you know, the bola tu. Kan? Kita ada tulung tu, klik 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 klik. Semalam empo saya baru baru ajar saya ada tu bulung hitam tu, klik 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 klik. Ada soalan? Ada soal? Itu je. Ha? Kalau itu ada soalan kita boleh balik lah, balik kerja dah tak apa lagi sarapan. Hey. And please don't skip your breakfast ah. You can skip your lunch, dinner, but not your breakfast. Hey. Itu sajalah. Kita nak lagi ke? Okay.